Jubile 2 is being built in Saudi Arabia. The industrial area is the world's largest civil engineering project. Over 20 years have passed since Saudi Arabia began planning its industrial metropolis. With a cost of $11 billion, it's been dubbed the world's largest civil engineering project. After Jubile 2 is completed in 2024, it'll have 100 industrial plants, miles of railways, motorways and roads, an 800,000 cubic meter desalination plant, and an oil refinery that'll produce 350,000 barrels per day. During peak building season, there are more than 20,000 construction workers on site. Over the next two decades, Jubile 2 is expected to attract $56 billion in local and foreign investment and generate 55,000 jobs. The project will be developed in four stages. All infrastructure will be provided by the Royal Commission, including roads, utilities, gas, electricity, seawater cooling, portable water, wastewater treatment, and a product pipeline corridor to King Fad Industrial Port. Expansions are also taking place at the port. On behalf of the Royal Commission, Bechtel manages and supervises the project. The objective of Jubile 2 is to maximize economic and social benefits for the kingdom and to further strengthen its globally competitive petrochemical industry. By expanding Jubile Industry City by 6,200 hectares, the project supports Saudi Arabia's national development strategy. The infrastructure is being built on land that was set aside 30 years ago in accordance with the original master plan. Up to 50,000 new residents will be accommodated within the existing community by 2024 through the addition of residential areas. Saudi Aramco's KRT corridor, which runs north-south, will be the biggest technical challenge for the construction of Jubal 2. As a result of the site's elevation, Bechtel cannot use the open canal method for cooling process water at Jubal 2, which works so well for Jubal 1. 200,000 cubic meters of water are expected to flow per hour through a network of pipelines with a diameter of 4 meters. Since the establishment of Jubal 1 in the 1970s, the Royal Commission has expanded its capabilities significantly. During Jubal 1, Bechtel successfully implemented a technology transfer program that helped develop a project management organization composed of 283 people with extensive project management experience. During the past three decades, Jubail and Yanbu have not only developed and maintained a modern infrastructure, but have also gained a worldwide reputation for developing and implementing environmental and safety standards that have become a global standard for industrial estates. The Saudi Arabian General Investment Authority, or SAGIA for short, is Saudi Arabia's official investment promotion agency. Among its three main functions are improving Saudi Arabia's competitiveness as an investment destination, improving the quality of service and value proposition for investors, and offering new investment opportunities to advance Saudi Arabia's economic diversification agenda by attracting businesses and investors. They're a big part of this mega project. As Saudi Arabia's investment environment continues to improve, in order to ensure SAGIA's compliance with international best practices, it works closely with its sister ministries, overseas investors have now considerable legal protection under the new foreign investment legislation. Using a one-stop shop system, the Royal Commission's Investment and Development Unit has improved its service to new industries. Investing in industrial and residential projects can be made easier with this service, which provides investors with information, documents, application forms, and answers to all their questions. For the future executives and employees of Jubile 2, the Royal Commission for Jubile and Yanbu is currently building housing facilities in the Jalmuda area. The first phase of the four-stage residential development plan has begun. There are plans to build 11,600 residential units in Jalmuda, covering 933 hectares. Commercial, recreational, health and security facilities will be available at the Jalmuda residential complex. 143,500 people live in Jubal Industrial City during the day. There are about 94,500 people living in the industrial city at night, indicating that many commute to work. At Jubal Industry City, the Royal Commission has spent roughly $5.8 billion on residential and commercial projects. Jubal redefined project management 
It was constructed by a workforce of 50,000 at its peak, which has attracted massive foreign investments, totaling $46 billion. It already has 6 to 7% share of the world market when it comes to the conversion of natural gas resource into value-added petrochemicals. Approximately 150 secondary, support, and light manufacturing operations operate in the city, including 17 major natural resource-based facilities. In 1977, work began on the industrial city at Jubail. A number of joint ventures are being established in Jubail, joining existing major capital investment projects. Over 30 plants are under construction in Jubail, two are undergoing major expansions, and 44 are being planned. Jubail 1 was guided towards sustainable economic development by the Royal Commission, and Jubail 2 follows the same in-depth planning and incentives for investors that made Jubal 1 so successful. Using technology has also been a dramatic recent development in the city. Almost every building in Jubal now has access to broadband internet, thanks to the Royal Commission's information technology expansion. From the beginning, Jubal 2 will be high speed. The planned 1,065km railway line linking Jubal with Jeddah via Dammam and Riyadh will increase the city's strategic importance. To bring raw materials to the industrial city, a rail link will also be built to the mineral-rich north. As for transportation between Dammam and Jubail, a six-lane highway is proposed. A robust and efficient communication system between all mission components is created along this main road within the project. There are hundreds of other roads and paths leading to smaller towns and areas associated with the project. During construction, more than 850 kilometers and 60 bridges were built. Years before industrial growth began, large oil pipes were erected, around which the project was planned meticulously. To accommodate changes and requests for expansion, the total project cost may go even higher. The United States, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, France, Japan, and Saudi Arabia are among the countries that use desalination. Jubal plant produces 1,401,000 cubic meters of fresh water per day, making it the largest desalination plant in the world. Saudi Arabia and neighboring Gulf countries, which have hot, water-scarce climates, rely heavily on desalination. Globally, around 16,000 desalination plants produce 1.5 liters of brine for every liter of fresh water produced, according to a recent United Nations study. Al Jubail treats waste brine plumes and releases them back into the Arabian Gulf, where Saudi Arabia produces 22% of the world's brine. In one desalination plant, magnesium will be extracted, and in another, sodium chloride will be made for petrochemical applications. In 2020, the government Saline Water Conversion Corporation will have completed the construction of seven new desalination plants, bringing the total number to 33. There are a few more privately owned plants. Saudi Arabia's eastern coast is home to the record-breaking Al Jubail plant and the largest hybrid plant in the world at Ras Al Khair. As a result of these plants, there are 7 million residents of Riyadh's capital who are supplied with desalinated water via 400 kilometers of pipelines into the desert. Bottom line, for a project as massive as this, you'd never expect to be in such a barren land such as a desert. Nonetheless, it's worth in the tens of billions and is incredibly impressive.